Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Seattle to Unknown. I am Melinda. And I'm Sarah. And we are a favorite friendly travel podcast of Doom. Friendly to favorites? Because why not? <laughs> I mean, I get the of Doom part. Doom and travel, I guess that would be accurate. Those are not a good pair. Well, when you travel with Sarah, it's always doom and travel. (laughs) No, no, no. It's not doom. It's just curses. I am cursed. Right. But I feel like that could be under the doomed category. Because you're cursed, our travel is doomed. Like, we're doomed to miss a train or have a train delay of some sort. That happened one time. Actually, you know, remember that one time we actually traveled with my sister and the trains changed? (laughs) I'm telling you. It's something about you and trains. It was quite the experience. We were trying to catch a train from Berlin to Dusseldorf, and we were waiting for the train, but the train with that number, the number on our ticket, never showed up. And we're sitting there, and we're sitting there, and a train pulls out, and I was like, oh, is that our train? It didn't have the right number on it. So we had no idea it was the one we needed. Yeah, right time, but wrong numbers. And everything was pre-booked, so you kind of have to follow that schedule. So we ran out of the train station, hopped in a cab, and decided we're going to race this train. Basically. To the next station. While Sarah's trying to tell the driver in German, I don't care, just go as fast as you can. And he's like going around roundabouts. Not that I want him to like drive over a roundabout, but I would like him to, you know, take the streets that don't have roundabouts on them and go as fast as you can. That was fun. And yeah... I have no idea how we pulled it off, but we beat the train to the next station. Because we ran, which was great because he parked like the furthest away from the entrance to the train station in the taxi lane that you could. And it's like, really, dude? Really? It could not have made it more clear. I need you to get us there now. (laughs) Like five minutes ago, actually. Uh, There had been a delay in the tracks between the station we were supposed to get on at and the next one. So we just, by some miracle, we made it to the next stop before the train did. It was like a German train miracle. It was like, because no, it's like Ferris yeah. Bueller when he's running through the backyards and through people's houses to get home before his parents. <laughs> that was us. Yeah, well, and it could have been worse had we not been able to convince your sister to please just give us money for the cab driver. <laughs> yeah, because she had what we needed in cash and we did not. And she's <sighs> like, but I was saving... Give us the money. Please let us leave this cab. (laughs) Do you want to go back or do you want to live in this cab? These are your options. (laughs) Ah, memories. We seem to have gotten off track a little bit earlier than usual. I don't know what you're talking about. That was totally planned. What's your cocktail this week, Sarah? Uh, My cocktail was the soup I had for dinner because I did not have time to go and get something to drink. And as Melinda always says... Soup is nothing but a hot drink with chunks. But this one doesn't have chunks. I was going to ask, did your hot drink have chunks this time? No, it's Thai coconut soup. Oh, yum. What's your cocktail? I have pineapple cranberry juice. Speaking of getting off topic, last night I was... (laughs) How did that spark something? (laughs) I was in bed yesterday watching something on my laptop And all of a sudden, Moose jumps up to sit next to me. And then I hear crunch, crunch, crunch. And I look over and he's pulled a bottle of, like an empty bottle of pineapple juice out of the trash. And was just cuddling it in bed. What a little weirdo. I was like, okay. So uh, no pineapple juice bottle is safe from this one. Why is your dog such like a dumpster diver? I don't know. He's very strange. Earlier today, we were walking and he saw a pizza man easily two blocks away and he sat down and waited for him i could not move him from his spot because he wanted that pizza guy to come by and maybe drop a piece but that made for like the cutest photo of him looking really sad and just sitting and waiting it was cute yeah, he's just like oh pizza i like pizza yeah as we've learned the dog eats you know half of yours every time like 85 percent of mine if he could when he can yeah. All right. Moving on. Any any updates in your world? Uh, no update. Not a whole lot has happened recently. It's not very exciting over here. What about there? <laughs> no, I'm just um 
Getting ready to transition to my new hair color. I have a plan, and I'm kind of excited. Tell me more. Well, I got the purple out, but I've got some of the residual blue-green, so I think I'm going to try and go peach over it before I transition to a new pink. I like pink. Frosé pink, if you will. Because <laughs> that's the name of the new dye. But, like, regular frosé or frosé in, like, a slurpy pouch? It's frosé as in hair dye that also kind of smells like grapes. It smells really good. That's, like, the good thing. It's Arctic Fox hair dye for anybody that's curious. I'm a big fan. They do good things for animals. Not pay- getting paid to say this, either. I mean, it's us, so obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> but if they want to... I love hair dye. I know you do. That's kind of my update. I am past my hair dyeing. That's fair. It You know, it once you let it just kind of go and be all the same color, it works. Over Christmas, my dad took me aside and he goes, when did you go blonde? I was like, dad, this is not blonde. And he looked at me for a minute and he goes, is that gray hair? Yeah, dad, I got it from you. <laughs> But see, that's kind of the nice thing, I think, for you is like certain angles. It just looks like you're a light blonde. But under light, it looks like I have tinsel hair. It's fantastic. It's like having your own disco ball. I have an idea. No. Yeah, I was going to say you're not going to like it. (laughs) (laughs) I know. If you're suggesting it, I know I'm not going to like it. But I will think it's hilarious and I will laugh. I know you would. But this may come as a shock to you. Making you laugh is not necessarily the primary motivator in my life. Wow, I'm offended. I mean, it's up there, but it's definitely, like, not number one through ten. Wow, that's just rude. (laughs) (laughs) All right, what's your news story for us? So, uh, if you listen to episode 39, you may remember I told the news story of a man who was arrested for climbing one of the pyramids of Giza. Like the Great Pyramids? Yes. Of Giza? Uh Uh-huh. They're not just pyramids. They're Great Pyramids. Or so I've been told. It's not like we need to differentiate between the Great Pyramids of Giza and the Lesser Pyramids of Giza. There's only one set of pyramids. No, no, we have... There's probably, like, ancient, like, crappy pyramids that just, they're like, just cover that up with more sand. Don't look at those. (laughs) I'm sure they're out there, like the starter pyramids, before they really had that system down. Maybe. Go with it. I suppose. So, in my, in the article that I had read about this guy, (laughs) they got some pretty basic facts wrong. Nice. So, I thought I would correct them. In it, they said that he was a Russian YouTuber. And remember what our first instinct about him was? Is he American? He's American. Yeah, okay. Nailed that one. Yeah, that checks out. He's Russian-American, born in Ukraine, but raised in California, I think. So he's very much an American. The other thing was that they were like, he's just kind of a prankster. Well, yes, but also his pranks are very weirdly sexual frequently. Oh, oh my. If you, and I'm not going to say his name again because I don't really want to drive further clicks to his page, but like the header image on his YouTube page is him with a bunch of naked ladies. And his uh, pinned video on his page is when he convinced his girlfriend to streak at a Real Madrid match. And apparently his mom has streaked for his channel before. Oh my, that's weird. That's weird. Yeah, a little bit. How do you start that conversation? Hey mom, I've got an idea for this soccer match, football match, whatever you call it. Yeah, well, it it is not my thing, is what I'll say. Some people... Streaking's not your thing? No, I don't find it particularly particularly funny but i get that some people do so i'm not going to pass judgment on that too terribly much what i will say is that in our first go round talking about this guy he had said that he was climbing the pyramids for a good cause and it has since come to light what that good cause is fame i mean i'd argue that's probably a good chunk of it but he says his reason was to stop war what uh, yeah, mm-hmm. 
that was my question. So when he climbed the pyramid, he was wearing a hoodie that he had had like screen printed with stop war across the chest. And then he added in smaller text across the bottom, help Australia. I'm sorry, isn't Australia on fire? Yes. Are we having a war on fires? I I think they're two separate things. Stop war was probably his first idea. And then save Australia was an afterthought that he tacked onto the bottom. Ah, uh, okay. And then he linked to a GoFundMe he had created where he wanted to raise half a million dollars for charities. He does not say which charities. He just says, not the Australian government, but charities. I so, I can't right now. Like, no. Yes. Here's a whole bunch of, like, vague buzzwords that's been in the news. And I'm going to do this really stupid thing and pretend it's for this. Exactly. Yeah. So his video, which came out a week ago, of him climbing the pyramid has 278,000 views. And again, because I don't really see anything that indicates he actually wants to donate money, I'm not going to give him any more publicity. We're not going to link to the video. It's all a little sketch. But uh, yeah. he's getting some attention. Which is interesting because he has 10 million subscribers and only 200,000 views. Which is not a good ratio. No, because everybody probably heard about it and be like, this guy is dumb. Yeah. Uh, so here's what he says. I want everyone to hear me when I tell you how it, in how it is that we pay attention to what is going on the world outside our backyard. My goal is to spread the word and raise half a million dollars to contribute to, to contribute to Save Australia. Note, Save Australia is not an actual organization. It's just a weird typo. I am going to donate all of the money to local Australian charities and not any government organizations. Think about all the billions of animals who are dead or severely hurt who need rehabilitation. Think of all, think about all the firefighters and volunteers risking their lives to save their country, which is part of the government. Think about all of the people having to evacuate, losing everything they own and their homes. Let's do our part and help. Any donation counts. Which is why when I say his shirt said, stop war, the Australian thing is clearly added on later. It's like, oh, here's an actual charity, except not an actual charity. It's just a cause. And then his GoFundMe, where he says he's going to raise half a million dollars, is currently at, you want to take a guess? $275, Alex. I mean... Out of the range of zero to five hundred thousand, you're not too far. It has raised fifteen hundred dollars. Wow, that's kind of impressive. He got that much in fourteen days. What the hell? Yeah. Who are those people that donated to his stupid cause? Clearly, he's not being. He's not using this and doing things the right way. Yeah. It. While it was, it would still be stupid and not make any sense. If he had run up there with a shirt that said, just save Australia on it. But clearly in the video, that was just kind of added on. Because when he gets up to the top of the pyramid, he babbles about how we need to stop war and Israel and Palestine and stuff. It's like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're just saying words. So, um, that's our <sighs> update. We were Yikes. wrong when we said he was an American. I mean, granted, I got that from the article. But aside from that, we were right on the nose when we said it kind of seemed like a made up charity, good cause. Not that Australia doesn't need money and shouldn't get money for support. But right. that's it's... not why he's doing it. Yes, exactly. And the thing about doing a GoFundMe is that when it ultimately fails, he can just say, well, I tried, but... People are not tapped into causes quite like I am. Don't they take out, like, a lot of money from what you earn for, like, the website itself and whatnot? I think so. And I could be wrong, but I think GoFundMe still... Like, I don't think for GoFundMe you have to prove how you're using the funds. Oh, so he could use the funds for another trip to do something stupid if he really wanted to. Exactly. Shame, shame. You know your name. Mm hmm. <laughs> Somebody donated and in the comments wrote, 
Wanted to help. I don't like clim- climbing on the pyramids, though. Very disrespectful. Five dollars. Why give him anything? Then don't give him five dollars. No. <laughs> no, no, no. So, yeah. That's our update. And, uh, yikes, dude. Yikes. Yeah. But, sort of on that subject... If you want to get into traveling without having to start a GoFundMe, we've got some tips and ideas on how to save for that travel. We aren't necessarily saying that travel is affordable for everybody. It's just that more people can probably travel than they think they can, if that makes sense. And uh, conversely, fewer people can afford to travel than do. Yeah, I think we all know both types of people. The, on the one hand, you've got the people who say, I could never afford to travel. It's so expensive. I don't how, know how you do it. I could never do that. And then you've got the people on the other hand who are like, what's that? Debt? I don't care. I'm going to Egypt. I'm going to climb a pyramid. Nope. <laughs> We're not friends anymore if you climb the pyramids. So there's people on both sides. So this episode is going to be all about tips for people who actually want to travel, but aren't sure how. Bearing unforeseen circumstances, you can also probably make this work if you're realistic about budgeting. And if you want five stars all the way, then it's going to be more expensive. But if you're not someone that really cares about doing the whole luxury route, you can travel on the cheap. We've done it. We're living proof. It just depends on your flexibility and what you prefer, which that's fine. Everybody's different. If you want to travel five star, you're going to have to work a little bit harder than someone that's okay with doing the budget thing. But uh, you just have to commit and actually make a plan on how to save. That's the trick for a lot of people is that if you want to travel, it is a substantial cost even if you do it on the cheap yeah, it's still you have to commit to doing it you have to make that a priority if that's really your priority if it's not your priority it might take you a little bit longer to get there but if you set your mind to it and really commit to a system you will assuming your salary is sufficient for you to live on then you'll get to that goal more quickly than you would think yeah it's just about becoming good at saving And you don't have to, like, stop spending money on everything except for, like, bills and food. It's a little bit easier than you think. Yeah, it really is. And I know we each have our own system for doing that. And it kind I can't speak to how long it took you. I'm actually kind of good at saving money. (laughs) I live a boring life. (laughs) So when you figure out what works for you and you lock it in and you keep doing it and you commit to doing it, it's easier than you think. For sure. But if you need some tips on where to get started, let's walk you through this. We will hold your hand and try and help you out. So the first thing I would suggest is talking to your payroll department at work. If they do direct deposit, they are capable of splitting that check and depositing it into two different places. So you can say, I want X amount of my check to go into this account and everything else to go into this account. Look at your budget realistically. If you think you can put aside, it doesn't matter what the amount, no matter how small or how big, it'll eventually start to grow the more you do it. Determine what amount you can spare, have it put into another account, and you don't even have to think about it. There's no having to move things around yourself that way. And that's the most efficient way of doing it. Sometimes payroll people will grumble a little bit about that, but they can do it. They might not want to, but they can. And depending on where you work, for us at my job, it's all online. So you can set up direct deposit. You can set up having it split into different accounts if you want to. But the nice thing is if you can't quite commit to like a solid, I'm going to move this much every week, no matter what my check's going to look like, I think it'll let you do a percentage of it, which it's going to be a little bit slower possibly, but it's you're not going to feel it as much if you're only moving like a certain percentage. And then once you're kind of comfortable on where this, you know, your starting point percentage of what you're taking out into your savings account or moving over, then you can up it and it's not going to feel like a drastic chunk of money has been taken away. That's kind of like more of a long haul, I guess, saving. Or, you know, when you have more time to plan, you can do percentages. 
Yeah, and once it's automatically happening, you won't notice that you're not getting that money. It's not that you're not getting it. It's just yeah. it's going someplace where you're not necessarily touching it. And if you're really concerned that like, if you have them in linked accounts, like a saving and a checkings account, that you might just transfer between the two when you need it, open a bank account at a different bank so they're not going to be easily transferable. You could always go in if you really needed the money and talk to a teller and get it or transfer it yourself online or however. But if they're separate, the temptation to just quickly move things around is lesser because it's slightly more challenging. Not challenging enough that it's a problem, but not right. the click of the button easy. Yeah. So if you're going to be tempted, that's probably a really good tip on how to leave it alone and let it grow and flourish. Mm -hmm. And alternatively, if you're payroll company is really really dragging their feet on this and they just don't want to do it i worked in payroll for a while so i can say that. wow you crush dreams the other thing you can do <laughs> is that you can if you're wanting to move the money into a linked account most banks have an automated transfer so for instance for a couple years i had it set up that every first of the month they would move 200 dollars from my checking into my savings and it just did that without me even thinking about it. I never missed the money because that was what I determined was reasonable for me to be without. And I just moved it. I didn't think about it. And I just let it grow in a savings account. Yep. Easy peasy. Just start with a, a dollar amount that you're comfortable with or a percentage that you're comfortable with. Don't try and do too much in one go. Yep. And if that gets comfortable, maybe add another 20 bucks. And if that gets comfortable, you just, yeah. you work with what you can deal with. Slowly increase. Yeah. Um, another thing is, if you're someone that tends to use cash, try saying to yourself that any time you get change back and you get a 10 or a 5, you're going to put that bill away and not use it. If it's easy just to put the $10 into like an envelope or something, make sure you know what your envelope or <laughs> that it's in that mattress so if you are cleaning or something it doesn't get thrown out i love that there's a lot of stories about that you know oh they stashed away all this money in this specific coat pocket or this envelope that they stuck here in the mattress and then it gets donated or thrown out movie recommendation if you are interested in watching German cinema. There's a film that came out probably 15 years ago called Goodbye Lenin about a son and mother, or the mother has a traumatic brain injury right before the, um, the East Falls in Germany. And so she has lost her memory and the son is trying to convince her that the wall is still up because if she's further traumatized, she might have further brain issues. And he knows that she's hidden money somewhere in their house and he needs to take it to the bank to switch it from like East German currency to German currency. Oh. And so he and his girlfriend are tearing the house apart trying to find the money, but they can't just ask her because she can't know that it's, it's really suspicious. She can't know it's now reunified Germany. It's a very good movie, but uh, be forewarned, I guess. There's a scene where he watches porn for the first time. But other than that, very wholesome. Because East Germany didn't have such things. Your cat does not approve of this topic. No, she does not. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really good movie about sort of readapting oneself to the west when you've been in the east for so long and suddenly you are in the west and also a lesson about stashing money in weird places yeah don't do that yeah um again so if you're setting money aside just be consistent with whatever your your plan is on this one um don't touch the money whenever you see it or add to it and you're like oh look you know this extra hundred won't be missed <laughs> And uh, remember where you've put it. Yes. Maybe tell someone who you trust, hey, it's in the left shoe of these really old shoes that I love. Don't throw them away. <laughs> you know, set yourself up right. Yeah. And another way to do that, instead of picking like 
a denomination, like $10. Another thing you can do is every bill, probably in the world, but I can't say that for certain, has a serialized number on it. And some people pick a number and for that year, anytime they find a bill with a serial number ending in nine, they sock that away. So that's another way. That's like way too much effort. Yeah, I know. But some people say it really works for them. It's like, oops, this hundred bill, hundred dollar bill ends in a nine. I'd spend it, but my system says I have to put it away. So I don't know. It's worth throwing it out there. If that works for you, go for it. But again, maybe tell somebody you trust not to rob you where you're stashing it. I mean, stashing it could be as easy as saving up those bills for a week and then going to the bank and depositing them. Yeah, but have a solid plan. Yep. Another thing you can try is um, there are apps that do automatic savings for you. So for instance, there's one called Digit, I believe, and it sort of learns your spending habits. You, oh, words are hard. You sync it to your bank and it sees, okay, by this point in the month, you usually spend this much. You haven't spent quite that much. So the difference I'm going to put into a savings account. And so it just periodically takes out small amounts that you're not going to notice. And it starts off small, like it's going to take a quarter here and a nickel there. And when it realizes, okay, so this is sort of the flex in her budget. I'm going to take out 25 bucks. I'm going to take out 10 bucks. Just it looks through and sees what you've got that you're not going to notice missing. And it sweeps it into another account, which is really good if you're just not in the swing of putting money away. If you can't guarantee that you can put 100 bucks into a separate account once a month. On the other side, the negative is because it's being moved into one of their accounts, they are accruing the interest on the money you aren't. So it has its drawbacks. They're getting interest on your money, but you don't have to think about it. Your money is being put somewhere safe every couple days and it will accrue really, really quickly. Huh. That's kind of interesting that it actually looks and see like, oh, this time you can move 50. This time you can move five. Yeah. The only drawback is when you've mentally kind of earmarked a chunk of money for something And it's like, hmm, I see you got an extra hundred bucks sitting here. I'm going to take 20 of it. Like, no, I just paid a bill for a hundred bucks. The good news is, is that if you ever have any overdraft fees, it guarantees it'll reimburse you if it's taken too much out of your account. Oh, okay. That's kind of nice. So it's nice. I found it sort of a hassle because I used it for about two years. And then at the end, it was right before I was moving here. And I was mentally earmarking big chunks of money for plane tickets and new suitcases and like important things. And I was having to email them like once a week to say, okay, I get why you took this money, but give it back. And it is really easy. You just text message them, hey, transfer a hundred back and it'll move it back for you. But that's kind of but obnoxious to have to do, yeah. especially if you're already pre-planning on you know spending that on certain specific things yeah so it's got its good points it was certainly really effective for putting money into savings really quickly not really quickly it's not like it's pulling 100 200 bucks at a time but it builds up any little amount is going to pile up really quickly but yeah pros and cons consider that if you're really just starting out and you don't know you need someone to hold your hand because it it uses ai and figures it all out for you hmm and you also can like dial up the aggressiveness or dial it down so if you want to save money fast dial it up and it's going to pull larger chunks of money at a time that's kind of cool kind of a bummer that you also don't get the interest on it but i get it service fee essentially Put me in, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. And I think there's a lot more savings apps out there now to help you save. Yeah. Plus, I think there's other accounts where when you, like bank accounts themselves, that when they see you've spent like a dollar seventy-eight, it 
rounds the change up and then transfers that into savings. So there's definitely lots of options. And if you have a bank account that will do that for you, you'll at least get the interest yourself in those cases. (laughs) Yeah. But I wouldn't necessarily switch bank accounts specifically for that service. Right. That's too much. Too much. Not quite worth it. And then one of the simpler things, well, it should be simpler in theory, um, it's just cutting spending where you don't need it. Everyone has somewhere where they can cut their spending. Trick is, you kind of have to put thought into it. It could be easy as realizing that you're paying way too much buying coffee out when you don't necessarily need to. Try to make a more conscious effort to make your own meals versus buying out. Maybe you don't need that fancy new purse after all. Kind of simple things like that, but it's one of those where you really have to sit down and think about or look at like your statements and seeing where you're spending a lot of money where maybe you don't need to be. You should eat Mm -hmm. and pay your bills. You know, that's important, but does it have to be eating out all the time? Does it need to be that extra Starbucks in the afternoon? Use good judgment. Yeah, and that's not to say eating out or drinking Starbucks are bad. Nope, not at all. It's just, it's how you prioritize your spend. Because someone who may want Starbucks daily may be cutting their spend elsewhere that nobody else is seeing. So that's one of those things where it drives me a little bit nuts on Facebook where people will post you could travel but you have to have starbucks like when just because someone's spending money on starbucks doesn't mean that they're not cutting spend elsewhere it's sort of the way it's phrased sometimes has this implication that starbucks is a moral i don't know how to phrase it is morally bad no whatever drink your starbucks or maybe instead of spending it on the starbucks coffee you go to the little coffee shop down the street that's cheaper you know what i mean Maybe you skip the getting the cake pop five times a week to like three. I don't know. <laughs> They're expensive. Um, but it's I just, just, I don't want it to seem like we're passing judgment on people who do like Starbucks or do eat out because there is a cost benefit calculation that needs to be done. Maybe you eat out because you work a bajillion hours of overtime and you just don't have time to cook for yourself. That's fine. Like, Do whatever you want to do. But if saving for travel is something you want, do look over your bank statements, see where you're spending money, and then make a decision what makes sense for you to cut. Yeah. So instead of using DoorDash to get your food delivered, do an order to go. Cut out the middleman, cut out that extra delivery expense. Yeah. Something like that. It's just, it's finding ways to keep up with your lifestyle and your needs, but without paying more than you need to be. Does that make sense? Exactly. Yeah, you don't have to cut out buying coffee out. Just maybe go to the cheaper coffee stand. That still makes good coffee. Don't settle for bad coffee. Just don't go to one of the weird Seattle ones where you walk in or you drive by and you're like, oh, the person inside is naked. Why? Why are you naked? Espresso machines are very hot. Wait, wait. Is this like purposefully naked or someone's a little crazy and they just wandered in naked and wanted coffee? Either. It shocked me when I was in California and I realized that like the little coffee kiosk drive through things is a uniquely Seattle, Oregon thing. Like it's just Washington, Oregon. Like bikini baristas or like the drive through coffee huts? Both. <laughs> okay. But they find the bikini barista thing especially baffling outside of Washington and Oregon. I find it baffling too because it gets cold here and that's just rude. Those poor girls. Plus, there was a big expose, well, several years ago now, about how a lot of the bikini barista places were not actually wearing clothing anyway, and they were also offering various sex acts. Yes. And Moose does not like it. Uh, But yeah, it's just, it's finding ways to save money where you can without, you know, you don't have to dramatically change your lifestyle or or what suits your needs. It's just finding ways to not spend so much when you don't need to. Yeah, for me, for me, a big thing was that, you know, if you're going into Target, you leave with just the thing you wanted. 
Stop going up and down every aisle. You don't need to look around. Just grab the card and leave. Uh Uh-huh. But, you know, pay for it. Don't just walk out with it. Don't steal. (laughs) Thank you for clarifying. Yes. Stealing was not one of the tips on this list. No, it's not. That's that's not the way to go, kids. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. Any other money-saving tips? The other thing that I did that helped me was making a plan. I set a very, very loose budget estimate, and I mapped it out. On this paycheck, I'm moving this much. On this paycheck, I'm moving that much. And then if something came up along the way and I saw, okay, I needed to pay a little extra at the dentist this month, so I'm going to have to dip into it for this month's paycheck. I went down my list for future transfers that I was going to make and said, okay, I took out 200 from my savings here for the dentist. That means between now and this payment, I'm going to make up for it. So that way I was keeping myself on track and making sure that I met my goal. So, uh, oops, emergency costs, got to deal with it. No way around it. But this is what I'm going to do to fix it. I'm just someone in general who likes to have a rainy day fund, just in case. Especially um, having a job that's a part of a union and every now and again it's like, hey, look, we might go on strike. Where it's like you get, like, a small piddly amount of money if you pick it, but that's going to be your only income. And who knows how long it's going to last. So I always like having money that I just don't touch. It's just there to save and grow and use it for travel when I need it or any oddball expense that comes up. So I just make sure that my checking account, my debit account is at a comfortable level. And then once it's kind of there and maintaining, I'll just move money over into my savings account. Just so then I have... Mm -hmm. I'm going to be covered for whatever I need to spend regularly for like food bills, all that good stuff. And then I have my rainy day fund. Because in life, shit very much happens. And I don't want to be stuck in a position where I can't afford something. You know what I mean? I can't afford the bill or anything. Mm -hmm. I just like to make sure that I'm okay if something major happens it's going to suck and I'll have to rebuild, but I'm going to be okay. I'm just weird like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to reiterate before we close up, travel is expensive. Like there's no denying that even going on the cheap can put a dent in your wallet. And so if you need to work up to being able to save the amount of money necessary for an international trip, there's so much you can do in your own backyard to start with. Yeah. That is much more budget friendly. And if you right now are doing financially not as steadily as you would like, then do something small and use the time to just save up more. Now you're bleeding into my tip of the week. Well, you didn't tell me what your tip of the week was. So suck it. <laughs> no, it's a secret. So my tip of the week is... If you're just starting out on how to save for a vacation for travel, or you're really experienced, but again, things aren't, you know, sunshine and daisies, it's a little bit rougher, just save a little bit so you can take a little weekend trip. It doesn't have to be far. If you're a little inland, but you're near the coast, that's like, you know, a few hour drive, plan a short little getaway to the we- like to the beach. Stay somewhere that's not going to be completely filthy, but it doesn't have to be fancy as hell. And then just get away. So then you still have the travel, the adventure going without putting too much financial strain while you save up for the bigger trips. You know, if if your goal is to get to Italy, but that's going to take you a while because of things, just make sure you're still keeping your travel level alive. Don't make it feel like such a hard punishment to save for it. Take small little trips that you can afford. And they say that Americans have the least amount of vacation offered to them and they use the least amount of it because they feel pressure to keep working, that it shows lack of dedication if you take time off. No, those days are yours. Use them because your mental health is very important and 
vacation is rejuvenating and helps you power through the rest of your days. And you you do need that break from your work, that week-long vacation from your work, that three-day vacation for your work. You know, whatever you can make work for you, go take it. It makes me so sad when people are like, oh, I've got like a million weeks of vacation and I've never used it. I'm like, you need yeah. to jump on that. Because that's essentially payment that you are not receiving. Yeah. And if you quit, they pay you out for it, but why not get paid for it while you're accruing it and still there? Yeah, and not every job will pay you out for it. That's true. I'm very lucky on that one. But I plan on using mm -hmm. my vacation. It's just, and it's it's nice to have something to look forward to. Yeah, and if travel for this year is completely out of the question, you financially cannot make it work, still take those days off or take a day trip like take those days off and yeah drive stay home and just oh stay home well i mean if financially you cannot spare the money for gas then still take your time off stay home and listen to this podcast and recover to the soothing tones of our dulcet and voices. maniacal manic laughing <laughs> <laughs> uh Maniacal laugh, maniacal laugh. Yeah, I guess, like, staying home and planning, that's kind of cool, too. That's kind of fun to do. Planning, looking up places, looking up good food ideas. That always gets me, like, really, really excited to go to where, and then I feel like I'm ready to be there. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, or if you can't afford the gas, just drive three hours in a direction go to a new place, check it out. Yep. Doesn't have to be long. Whatever you do, take the time to recover. Yes. Travel is also about your time for you to be you and not worry about work. Use yep. your vacation time. Even if you're not doing much of anything, use it. Yep. So I hope that after listening to this, you got some good ideas for what to do to save for travel and or bad ideas, you know. Truly, I know that when you are making minimum wage, it's hard to see a way from where you are now to living your travel dream. And it can take time. I, for the first, what, five years at my job, I did not take an international vacation. My idea of vacation was just going home for Christmas because if I did really good puppy dog eyes my parents would help to pay for the flights but they were going to anyways just to have you back home <laughs> they like you or something i know it's very strange but one day i was like no i want to travel it's something i like i need to reprioritize which and i was still making minimum wage but and it took a while to get there but i made it work for our first international trip Neither one of us is making much of anything, and we gave ourselves, like, two years to save up mm -hmm. and make this happen, especially since I also had the added expense of having to get the passport to do this, mm -hmm. but, you know, we set our ourselves a goal that would not put too much strain on either one of us, seeing how we weren't making much of anything, and we made it happen. It's just small, realistic goals. Yeah. Fuck resolutions. Make small, <laughs> realistic goals that you can get to. Give yourself that time. In all fairness, neither one of us had dependents we need to pay for and clothe and do all of that. So you may have additional challenges. You might have medical bills that you need to take care of. We're just saying that theoretically, if you put your mind to it, it might take a little while. It might be challenging to stick to, but it can be done for most, though obviously not all people. Yeah. But if it takes you four years to save and be ready for this trip, how great is that trip going to be? How great are those memories going to be? Even if it's something you can't do often, you're going to cherish every moment. Trials and tribulations, you know, all the good stuff, it, it, it's going to be worth it for you. You're going to really appreciate it when you get there. Yeah. Man, we should become motivational speakers. I'm proud of us. <laughs> or at least me. Yeah, no, we're we're going to be your best friend that's going to, like, help you get there. Because you can get there. You can. If you really want it, 
you can get there. And maybe we'll see you there. You know, I mean, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. After we invent our time machine. But think of how much we can travel after we invent a time machine. We're going to be rich. Unless it breaks and you're like prehistoric era. Then we're going to be burned at the stake for being witches. God, see, it's you and transportation and that curse. <laughs> see, doom travel. <laughs> it's full circle, Simba. Oh, I mean, it's the circle of life. This is why I don't drive a car. <laughs> My cursed ass behind the wheel of a car, we're all in danger. May that never happen. <laughs> God, over Christmas at one point, my nephew said something about how he needs to get his license because otherwise, how is he going to get a job? And I was like, you know, I've had a job for over 10 years now and I've never had a car. He goes, you are the exception to the rule, Aunt Sarah. <laughs> and you've never had a driver's license? Never one. Just a permit? Wait, have you had a permit? I've had a permit a couple times. See, I think it's safer for everybody involved. Here's the thing is I've had a permit, I think, four times now. Every single time I get my permit, so in the weeks leading up to it, people are like, oh, yeah, that's so exciting. You're finally going to get your license. It'll be great. We'll, t we'll take you out to drive. You can use my car. It'll be fantastic. You'll get your license in no time. I get excited. I go get my permit. I come back. I'm like, hey, I got my permit. And they're like, oh, I'm busy that day. What? Wait, wait a second. I did not specify a day. I didn't even ask. Like, yeah, yeah. No, I'm still busy that day. My car is um, going to be in the shop forever. <laughs> they realize that you're at the point where they're really scared about you learning to drive. But when those like muscle memories and reflexes aren't so hot <laughs> in your old age. Oh, yeah. When I was super old and 18. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But hey, the good news is, is I'm not making car payments or paying for gas. You know where that money goes? Food. Well, that too. Foreign food. Thai coconut soup. So, uh, and on that note, join us next week for another episode where we do more stuff like this. Okay. Maybe it'll be motivational. Maybe it won't. Who knows? We certainly don't. Maybe it'll be completely off topic with a small smidgen of travel. So basically back to normal. Yeah, yeah. We'll see you next week. And remember, it's an adventure. So save up so you can have that adventure. We want that for you. If you want that for you, then we want that for you. But presumably, if you're listening to this, you probably want that. Otherwise, you've been listening to a lot about travel and you do not care. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very strange. Which we also appreciate you. Yeah, we appreciate all of you guys for listening. So yeah, see you next week. Bye. Okay, bye. Hey everyone, thanks again for listening to another episode of Seattle to Unknown. Don't forget to tell your friends about us and subscribe so you never miss a thing. You can also find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest under c 2 unknown That's S-E-A-T-O unknown. Or you can check us out on our website, www.c2unknown.com. Want to know what we do on our off time? You can find both Sarah and I on Twitter and Instagram. Sarah is at S-A-R underscore S, and I'm at Hooligan Monster on both. We would also love to hear from you. Send us an email with your stories and travel tips to c 2 unknown at gmail.com. Until then, it's an adventure. Bye!